Good morning. Welcome to St. Mary Magdalene Church. We warmly welcome everyone who is visiting. Thank you for fully wearing your mask properly and keeping your distance out of love for your neighbor. I want to address the uh, parishioners who are watching us online. I would like you to take a look around the church. And I want to encourage you, if you're watching us online, to look at the spacing that we have, look at the masks that people are wearing, and I want you to know that you are welcome here, that this is a safe place for you. We have done our due diligence as a parish to make sure that we disinfect before and after every Mass, that our ushers are available with hand sanitizer at the entrance and at the exits, and that you don't have to touch anything except Jesus when you come here. If it's been several months since you've received the, our Lord in the Eucharist, we invite you to come, especially if you are spending time throughout your weeks going to HEB or to Walmart or going out to eat. Remember that we have spiritual food here for you. So I encourage you uh, throughout the week to try to come to either daily mass, a Monday night, uh, 7 p.m. Spanish mass, or any of our Sunday masses. Let us prepare the way of the Lord in this holy mass. Please silence all electronic devices. Our one collection today is for the needs of our parish and 10% is for St. Vincent de Paul. Our celebrant today is our priest in residence, Father Larry Serga, assisted by our deacon, Art Lozano. What are your prayer intentions for this holy mass? Let us arise and pray for one another as we welcome the Lord with our opening song. as we continue our spiritual journey during ordinary time, we come before Lord Jesus with a humble heart. Lord Jesus, you are the Savior of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you call all sinners to yourself. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, glory, glory to God in the Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. For you. basement of your son, raised up a fallen world. Fill your faithful with holy joy on those who have rescued from the slavery of sin. You bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O God of Zion, sharp for joy, O God of Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you, a just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, a foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion will be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is, Forever I will sing. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will 
story, O oh my God and King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. I will. and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. I will praise your name. give you thanks, O oh Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. I will praise your name. up all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. reading from the letter of St. Peter to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit. If only the spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give you life to your immortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, 
For although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. No one knows the Father except the Son and anyone whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. In the short gospel that we hear today is very beautiful words from Christ. And it's the same type of gospel that you would find in the little green book for anointing of the sick. I usually uh, proclaim that gospel when I give people uh, the anointing of the sick when they're struggling with their health problems. Now these beautiful words that Christ speaks today, it comes to the point of an irony. Because he's speaking to people, the scribes and the Pharisees, who won't listen to him. Jesus reminds them in this other situation in which the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, who lived very sinful lives that led to their spiritual destruction, if they actually repented from the evil ways and returned to God, things would be very different for them. Coming back to the Lord to experience his love, mercy, forgiveness is possible if people have listened and changed their minds. We are God's children. We make mis uh, mistakes and we sin. But Alib keeps calling after us to come to him so that he could forgive us, refresh us, and give us contentment in this life. We all want happiness and fulfillment in this life, but our secular society tries to fulfill all those needs <coughs> excuse me, through worldly desires only. But unless God is number one in their lives, they would never be satisfied. Many people witness Jesus' mighty deeds before their very eyes, but they still lacked belief in him. In other Gospels, a contrast is made between the unbelieving Pharisees and scribes who are supposedly wise and learned and the faithful disciples, of tax collectors, and sinners who actually believed in Jesus. So our Lord Jesus Christ invites us to follow him, obey him, since that's the only way that, we'll that we will experience true life. If we listen to him, then he will carry us all through all, all the difficulties of life. Now, when Jesus promises to rest, for us to rest in him, he does not promise us a long life filled with riches and all kinds of pleasures. Instead, Jesus is clear that the way to a full and complete life is through the cross. His yoke is easy and his burden light. Only if we are willing to walk with him to suffering and death to life. The Spirit of Christ 
living within us gives us hope even in the midst of the trials of our time. Jesus is with us, sharing with our suffering, carrying us in ways we don't even realize. And yes, Jesus invites us who are tired and worn out by the challenges of life and the burdens of life and come to him. And this is a very comforting command since you all carry different burdens in life. And we learn in today's gospel, we hear that Jesus explaining how God is revealed more to children or the little ones than the, than the so-called wise and learned people. The scribes and the Pharisees were very resistant to Jesus' good news as a threat to their power, prestige, and place in society. We learn that by listening to his voice and learning from him as an, and an apprentice, as does a master in imitating him, the wise and the learned, the scribes and the Pharisees in Jesus' day, were getting nowhere in their relationship with God. And yet it was that children and sinners were discovering more of God simply by following him and obeying him. Jesus is gentle and humble, welcoming and forgiving, and ready to help those who come to him, who could recognize he is the Son of God in the world. If we want Jesus to refresh us, we need to go to him. We need to go to him in a very humble way, open our minds and our hearts and our souls to him, repent our sins to him, and promise to follow him faithfully all the days of our lives. So we learn by listening to his voice, learning from him. Again, as Jesus describes his yoke as easy as birth and light, this part of his sermon on the mountain makes clear that turning to him demands a way of life that mirrors his own. It requires a definite turn, a conversion in a proper sense. Whether we think of the Christian life in terms of imitating Jesus or living according to the Spirit, our response to God's gift is the essential part of it. Now the wise and the intelligent are often mentioned in the sake of scripture in a very negative way, if you already kind of figured that out. See, they're the ones who profess that themselves are devout teachers of wisdom, or researchers of wisdom, even to the point they thought they had a monopoly of it. Even the prophet Isaiah said, woe to those in their own eyes make themselves for sages, quote unquote. Now, Jesus does not declare that they are excluded from salvation. He merely states a fact. It's the poor, it's the humble, it's the marginalized people of the world who are the first to welcome the word of God in their lives, the word of deliverance. Jesus comes to us, and he wants to heal us he wants to feed us. He wants to encourage us. He wants to protect us. He wants to forgive us. But we need to go to him to experience all of that. This is a two-way street here. If we make God be part of our lives, when God gives the grace and strength necessary to persevere for the challenging moments of this life, then God needs to be part of our daily Christian lives. Jesus' ministry was not resisted by the poor, but by the scribes and the Pharisees, and those with the overinflated ego who thought they were experts on God. When we are stressed out with the burdens of life, filled with anxieties, with unknown what's going to happen in the future, then we need to come back to Jesus. He reminds us time and time again, I am here, come to me. 
all your concerns in life, come to me so I can help you come to me so you have peace of mind in your lives. We need to tell our Lord Jesus about our concerns, our anxieties, our worries, plans, and prospects. He has not promised to take away our, our personal responsibilities from us, but to enlighten them so they become easier to bear, so we may have peace of mind. When Jesus says he will give us rest, he doesn't give a life without burdens, but he gives us a liberating way into solutions of our lives. To actually to follow Jesus today in the 21st century, we have to be counter-cultural in today's society who tells us the direct opposite. Kind of ironic that the big sinners of Jesus' day, tax collectors, prostitutes, they were the first ones to listen to the word of God, not the scribes or the Pharisees. It was the prostitutes, the tax collectors, the big sinners of Jesus' day who came to Jesus first, not the scribes and the Pharisees. The big sinners who come to Jesus to repent from their sins, not the scribes and the Pharisees. How ironic that is. It may be the scribes and Pharisees actually sinned less but they were too stubborn to acknowledge their own sinfulness. If we want a close, intimate friendship with the Lord Jesus Christ, we have to open the door of our heart to him. And the only way to open that door to our Lord Jesus Christ, we have to repent from our sins. We come before God in a humble way, confess our sins. We open the door of our heart for Jesus to lend to our lives, to forgive us, to show us his mercy. Do you want peace in your life? Do you want joy in your life? Then come to Jesus. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, for the Father, for all ages. Let us offer our prayers and needs to the Lord.
that members of the church be filled with the Spirit and recommit themselves as good stewards, we pray to the Lord. That leaders and people of this great country provide adequate care for those injured in its service, we pray to the Lord. That all who are weary from the burdens of daily life find support and solace in the love of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. That all who gather at this table find in their faith the strength to meet every difficulty, we pray to the Lord. We pray for a Gilbert Sepulveda, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Almighty God, we offer our prayers to you today, and we ask you to grant them through Christ our Lord. Thank you for your ongoing generous offering to God and thank you for your ongoing donations of much needed disinfecting cleaning supplies. 10% of today's collection is for our St. Vincent de Paul Ministry for the Poor. This week the parish office will be open only on Tuesday and Wednesday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. On Thursday, parish staff will be on retreat Keep them in your prayers for spiritual renewal, strength, and wisdom. The Adoration Chapel is also open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. The chapel will be sanitized twice a day, but please take your own precautions when you come. St. Mary Magdalene Nights of Praise are on Tuesdays in English and Thursday in Spanish starting at 7 p.m. in the church. Come, feed your faith by giving worship and praise to God. A reminder that the missalettes are available for you to take home, which can be used as a spiritual tool to study the weekly scriptures and readings. Please bring them back when you come to Mass uh, so that you can use them here as well. Please take a bulletin on your way out and bless your family with the family consecration prayer. Thank you and God bless. Make me a channel of your peace with Hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, a pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, true faith in you. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. There is darkness, only light, and where there's sadness, ever joy. O oh, Master, grant that I may never sink, so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand. in pardoning that we are pardoned, giving of ourselves that we receive, and in dying that we're born to eternal
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation be dedicated to your name. Purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven, to Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom we raise up Jesus from the dead, we hope for the everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, though the angels in heaven, we praise you as in joyful celebration we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness, which you gave us praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, be humbly in play by the same Spirit graciously make holy, by these gifts be brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and given you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and given you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess the resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial, of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim whose death, who you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, 
and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body with spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain the inheritance with your elect, especially most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Mary Magdalene and with all the saints. On his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Gustavo, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance into your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of your Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I live you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
just as a reminder, it was time to receive the body of Christ, deacon, or go to halfway in the church and take care of the people in the back of the church. And those in the first section here, the last pew of this first section come forward first uh, six feet apart. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. The less are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
price of life's demand shameful sin placed on him the hope of every man oh the blood of Jesus washes me oh the blood of Jesus shed for me what a sacrifice that saved my life yes the blood it is my victory save your son holy one slain so I can live see the lamb the great I am who takes away my sin oh the blood of Jesus washes me oh the blood of Jesus shed for me what a sacrifice that saved my life yes the blood it is my victory Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. We will have another announcement. Please be seated. Good morning. My name is Ben Cardenas. I am a volunteer at St. Vincent de Paul. And please, please accept St. Vincent de Paul's thanks for your generous contributions to help our brothers and sisters in need. An important item that I wish to mention this morning is our partnership with Bear County in helping pay electrical bills. To date, 101 homes have been helped with about $104,000 to pay electrical bills. If you're, uh, you, uh, obviously, if you're, as, uh, you're a U.S. citizen, whether you're naturalized or we're, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, or resident alien, you may apply for the assistance. If you are in need of this assistance, please call St. Vincent de Paul, 210-735-3700. Funds are running out. It's a federal fund, so... By, I'm, I'm guessing by about October, November, they'll be out. So please come see us. Secondly, know that we are open on uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 8.45 to 11. We have remained uh, open during the pandemic, and with your prayers for our health, we'll continue to stay open. Thank you so much. This being the first weekend of the month, if we have any birthdays or anniversaries this month of July, please stand 
in your pew for a special blessing. Lord Jesus, we ask you to send your healing touch upon those who celebrate birthdays and anniversaries this month. Keep them in good health and protect them all the days of their lives. In the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Begin with me, let this be the 